No more Aragon. No more Aragon. No more Aragon. Hey. <laughs> Got her. <laughs> that took everything in my being to not spit that out. I'm Demi Bobemi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're Demi Bobemi? Who else would I be? I didn't do the intro. I, just said, I just said, hey. <laughs> I was <a> blacked out. <laughs> I panicked. I had a panic blackout. <laughs> hey! How's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm dead inside. And oh boy, are our spirits lifted. We're fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the last episode of Inheritance. Forever. Forever. <laughs> When I said we're fucking drunk, you're like, we should have been drunk for this. I was thinking for the watch party, but then also should have been drunk for this. <laughs> it's watch the party. final chapter. <laughs> um, yeah, the watch party. Do we have a date set in stone for when we're going to do the watch party? No. Oh. We didn't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> well, there will be a watch party in the Discord at some point, with me and Demi on microphones, watching it live with everyone so that we can all watch Aragon together. I'm honestly so excited. It'll be um, fun. Yeah, I It'll think be a fun time hearing Demi freak out. I'm the only person on the planet who hasn't seen that movie. You ain't missing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Demi, give us... The final recap from this series, or for this series. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's what happened. Sometimes I just have to think, like, what was the last chapter? I, also, because we've been just, like, back-to-back -back recording. Mm -hmm. The story is really, like, flowing together the way it's supposed to be. So, I was just thinking, what was last time? But, you know, whatever, it's like, fine. Last time I'm... Pretty sure Galbatorx unalived himself. <laughs> Demi's recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. I'm pretty sure Aragon and Saphira went and picked up the rest of the fucking eggs and shit. Then they went on over montage to Ellis Mira. And then they met up with everyone and they were like, what the heck? This elf city is really cool. And by everyone, I mean Katrina and Roran. And they were having a party. And everyone's getting drunk. And Aragon's like, I really need some peaceful time by myself. So he walks away from the party. Guess who he sees? It's fucking Sloane. But you forgot he was there. I did. And guess what? Aragon gave him eyes so he could look at Katrina. The end. Nice. Did forget about the Manoa tree. Oh, yeah. They fucking circled it in a really culty way. And did the spell. Yeah, they say. That enabled the coal or the Urgles or Gargurgle or Gargurgle or mm -hmm. whatever their name is. Um, and dwarves to be dragon riders. And then also Sloan had baby blue eyes. Oh, yeah. He had brand new baby eyes. I think I just blacked out the Manoa tree part. Yeah, I think I got it confused like, with the Grinch. And then he also talked to the Manoa tree and was he like, did, and what did you want from me? And it was oh. like, <laughs> I already got it, bitch. Now you get to spend the rest of eternity figuring out what it was I got. <clears throat> You'll find out. <laughs> Will I? No, he'll find out. Oh. One day. Because it probably took his like, seed his ability to have fucking kids or some weird shit Ooh, i think that's, that's like a creepy. running theory and so one day he's gonna be like i would like a family and then ain't happening i'm gonna tree goes jokes on you beach he's gonna have to i don't know return to the manoa tree and be like i need it back and then she's gonna give him like an acorn and then like a baby aragon is gonna like grow out of the ground <laughs> i won't allow that <laughs> i just won't my uh, humor might just be uh, tilted off a little today because I was editing that cringe episode. <sighs> no. Yeah. So. Oof. That, that episode, like, I could tell fucked us up as we were reading it. Like, we were just, like, going into it, like, fucking fun and funny. And then, like, it just fucking tilted us. And then editing it, I feel fucking tilted. Uh-oh. Chapter 78, Leave Taking. 
It's the final chapter. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, guys. We're here. We finally made it. A week passed. Could you imagine that was the, the end. end of the episode? <laughs> <laughs> the end of the episode, and then like a week later, we pick it back up. <laughs> oh my god. A week of laughter and music and long walks amid the wonders of Ellis Mira. Aragon took Roran, Katrina, and Ismira to visit Ormus's hut on the crags of Telnir, and Saphira showed them the sculpture of licked stone she had made for the Blood Oath celebration. As for Arya, she spent a day guiding them about the many gardens in the city so they might see some of the more spectacular plants the elves had collected and created throughout the ages. Aragon and Saphira would have been happy to stay in Elismira for another few weeks, but Bloodgarm contacted them and informed them that he and the Eldenari under his charge had arrived at Ardwen Lake, and though neither Aragon nor Saphira wished to admit it, they knew it was time to leave. He, like, also doesn't even want to... I keep bringing this, up, bringing this up, but he does not need to leave yet. He, he really doesn't, like, need to go right now. He doesn't want to go right now. I keep like bringing this up. I'm sure by now somebody's commented on it, but he has the name of all names. He could like go clean Rowan Guard and they could go re habitat Rowan Guard. Yeah, but what about Angela's prophecy? Yo, fuck that prophecy. He can leave Allegasia another time. You determine your own fate. Heard that. It cheered them, however, when Arya and Fiernan announced that they would fly with them, at least until the edge of Duald and Varden, and maybe a bit further. Katrina decided to stay behind with Ismira, but Roran asked to accompany them on the first part of their journey. For as he said, I'd like to see what the far side of Alagazia looks like, and traveling with you is faster than having to ride all the way out there on a horse. But you're going to have to travel back. <laughs> at dawn the next day, Aragon said his farewells to Katrina, who cried the whole while, and to Ismira, who nursed on her thumb and stared at him without comprehension. Then they set out, Saphira and Fiernan flying side by side as they headed eastward over the forest. Roran sat behind Aragon, holding him by the waist, and Kurok dangled from Saphira's talons, his body reflecting the sunlight as brightly as any mirror. After two and a half days, they sighted Ardwen Lake, a pale sheet of water larger than the whole of Plancar Valley. On its western bank stood the city of Silthrim, which neither Aragon nor Saphira had visited before, and bobbing in the water by the city's wharves was a long white ship with a single mast. The vessel looked as Aragon knew it would, for he recognized it from his dreams, and a sense of inexorable fate settled upon him as he gazed at it. Wait, he dreamt of this ship? I don't remember him dreaming of the ship. Dude, I'm like... Can I just say, I'm like all in on the like prophetic dream nonsense like i love that shit so much i wish we would have got more of it because it's like <clears throat> the only three dreams i can remember from aragon is aria mm -hmm. murtag and then now this boat i kind of wish we would have got like a little bit more of that to really like set in stone that like this is something that happens to aragon he dreams the future that would be really interesting because I think that could have just added, like, an interesting element because, like, CP really likes to play with, like, your expectations, I guess, of stuff. So it'd be interesting for Aragon being, like, this is obviously, like, the whole thing is just, like, so traumatic. He would ha be having, like, bad dreams about stuff. So then it's, like, is this prophetic or is this just, like, a, a night terror? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This was always meant to be, he thought. They spent the night in Silthrim, which was much like Elismira, although smaller and more densely built. While they rested, the elves loaded the Eldenari onto the ship, along with food, tools, cloth, and other useful supplies. The ship's crew was composed of twenty elves who wished to help with the raising of the dragons and the training of future riders, as well as Bloodgarm and all of his remaining spellcasters, save Laufen and Uthanair, who at this point took their leave. There was nobody else that wanted to help with the fucking riders. No other humans, <clears throat> dwarves. Urgles that wanted to fucking volunteer and help the riders, so all of the riders are going to be raised by elves. Seems a bit unbalanced there, but what do I know? In the morning, Aragon modified the spell that kept the eggs hidden above Saphira and removed two, which he gave to the elves Ari had chosen to safeguard them. One of the elves would go to the dwarves, the other to the Urgles, and hopefully the dragons within would see fit to choose riders from their designated race. If not, then they would swap places. And if they still did not find riders for themselves, 
Well, Aragon was not quite sure what to do then, but he was confident Arya would figure something out. Flick the booger. <laughs> Once the eggs hatched, they and their riders would answer to Arya and Fyrnan until they were old enough to join Aragon, Saphira, and the rest of their kin in the east. Then Aragon, Arya, Roran, Kurak, Bloodgarm, and the other elves traveling with them boarded the ship and they set sail across the lake while Saphira and Fyrnan circled high overhead. <clears throat> The ship was named Talita, and a, after a reddish star in the eastern sky, light and narrow, the vessel needed only a few inches of water to float. Now that's a fucking shallow draft if I've ever heard yeah. of one. What, what an incredible vessel. It moved without sound and hardly needed steering, as it seemed to know exactly where its helmsman wished to go. It's that uh, autopilot they've got on it. Wind vane. <laughs> For days, they floated through the forest, first across Ardwin Lake, and then later down the Gaina River, which was swollen with the spring snowmelt. As they passed through the green tunnel of branches, birds of many kinds sang and flew about them, and squirrels, both red and black, would scold them from the tops of the trees, or would sit watching on branches that hung just out of reach. I like that use of word, like that just describes squirrels really well, like scold you, yeah. so good. When I, when I walk into work, sometimes there's this squirrel that's, like, on the ground, and then it will, like, run up in the tree and just, like, watch me and, like, go at me. Why are they like that? I don't know. They're, they're so fucking, aggressive. They're pissed, dude. They got fucking nuts to collect, and you're getting in the way <laughs> of their nut collection collecting. Winter is coming, dude. <laughs> it's, like, middle of summer. like, winter's coming. But I guess here, it's, like, kind of a big deal. Probably really stressed out a bit about it. Got a lot of anxiety about the winter coming. No. Aragon spent most of his time with either Arya or Roran and only flew with Saphira on rare occasions. For her part, Saphira kept with Fyrnan, and he often saw them sitting on the bank, their paws overlapping and their heads resting side by side on the ground. During the days, the light in the forest was golden hazy. During the nights, the stars twinkled brightly, and the waxing moon provided enough illumination to sail by. The warmth in the haze and the constant rocking of Talita made Aragon feel as if he were half asleep, lost in the remembrance of a pleasant dream. Eventually, as of course it had to, the forest ended, and they sailed out onto the fields beyond. The Gaina River turned south then, and carried them alongside the forest to Eldor Lake, the waters of which were even larger than those of Ardwin Lake. There the weather turned, and a storm sprang up. Tall waves pummeled the ship, and for a day, they were all miserable as a cold rain and fierce wind battered them. The wind was at their back, however, and it sped their progress considerably. From Eldor Lake, they entered into Edda River and sailed southward past the elven outpost of Ceres. After that, they left the forest behind entirely, and Talita glided on the river, across the plains, seemingly of its own volition. From the moment they had emerged from within the trees, Aragon had expected Arya and Fyrnan to leave, <clears throat> but neither said anything about departing, and Aragon was content not to ask them their plans. Dude, plot twist. She gave up her queendom and was going on an adventure. I'd be down for that. Farther south they went, across more and more empty land. Looking about them, Roran said, It's rather desolate, isn't it? And Aragon had to agree. At last they arrived at the easternmost settlement in Alagasia, a small, lonely collection of wooden buildings by the name of Hedarth. The dwarves had built the place for the sole purpose of trading with the elves, for there was nothing of value in the area save the herds of deer and wild oxen visible in the distance. The building stood at the juncture where the Azragni poured into the Edda, more than doubling its size. Aragon, Arya, and Saphira had passed through Hedarth once before in the opposite direction than they had traveled from Farthendur to Elismira, when they had traveled from Farthendur to Elismira after the battle with the Urgles. Thus, Aragon knew what to expect when the village came into sight. However, he was puzzled to see hundreds of doors waiting for them at the head of a makeshift pier that extended into the Edda. His confusion turned to delight when the group parted and Oryk strode forth. Raising Aww. his hammer, Valund over his head, Oryk shouted, You didn't think I would let mine own foster brother leave without saying a proper goodbye, now did ya? Grinning, Aragon cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted back, Never! I love Oryk. He's so fun. He's such a good guy, you know what I mean? Such a good little dwarf king. 
The elves docked the Talita long enough for everyone to disembark, save Kurok, Bloodgarm, and the other elves, and two other elves who stayed to guard the Eldenari. The water where the rivers met was too rough for the ship to hold its position without scraping against the pier, so the elves then cast off and sailed farther down the Edda in search of a calmer place to lay anchor. The dwarves, Aragorn was astounded to see, had brought to Hedarth four of the giant boars from the Bjor Mountains. The Nagran were spitted on trees as thick as Aragorn's leg and were roasted over pits of glowing coals. I killed that one myself, Oryx said proudly, pointing to the largest of the boars. Boar hunters. Hell yeah, dude. Along with the rest of the feast, Oryx had brought three wagons of the dwarves' finest mead, specifically for Saphira. Saphira hummed with pleasure when she saw the barrels. You will have to try it as well, she told Firnan, who snorted and extended his neck, sniffing curiously at the barrels. Mood and evening came, and the food was cooked. They sat at the rough-hewn tables the dwarves had built just that day. Orc banged his hammer against his shield, silencing the crowd. Then he picked up a piece of meat, put it in his mouth, chewed and swallowed. Elf goneth, he proclaimed. The dwarves shouted with approval, and the feast began in earnest. At the end of the evening, when everyone had eaten their fill, even the dragons, Orc clapped his hands and called for a servant who brought out a casket filled with gold and gems. A small token of our friendship, Oryx said as he gave it to Aragon. Aragon bowed and thanked him. Then Oryx went to Saphira, and with a twinkle in his eye, he presented her with a gold and silver ring that she might wear on any of the claws of her four feet. It's a special ring, for it will not scratch, nor will it stain. As long as you wear it, your prey will not hear you approaching. What a sick gift, dude. Yeah. The gift pleased Saphira immensely. She had Oryx place a ring on the middle talon of her right paw. And throughout the evening, Aragorn caught her admiring the band of gleaming metal. <laughs> I just love how just disgustingly vain she is. Yeah, I also like that that's like literally the perfect gift for a dragon who's like vain about being a little huntress or yeah. a big huntress. Be like, here's a ring that now you're fucking invisible. Fucking well, so good. What a thoughtful I, gift. I love Oric. I want a book about Oric. <laughs> what a guy. At Oric's insistence, they stayed the night in Hedarth. Aragon hoped to leave early the following morning, but as the sky began to brighten, Oric invited him, Arya, and Roran to breakfast. After breakfast, they fell to talking, and when they went to see and then they went to see the rafts the dwarfs had used to float the Nagram from Nagran from the Bjor Mountains to head Darth, and before long it was nearly dinner time again, and Oryx, ex and Oryx succeeded in convincing them to stay for one last meal. Caught them in the vortex. And then the next day came around, it was breakfast time again, <laughs> and then... <laughs> with the dinner, as with the feast the previous day, the doors provided song and music, and listening to the performance of a particularly skilled dwarf bard play delayed the departure of the party even further. Stay another night, Oryk urged. It's dark and no time for traveling. Aragon glanced up at the full moon and smiled. You forget. It's not so dark for me as it is for you. No, we must go. If we wait any longer, I fear we will never leave. Then go with mine blessings, brother of mine heart. They embraced, and then Oryk had horses brought for them. Horses the dwarves kept stabled in Hadarth for the elves who came to trade. Aragorn raised his arm in farewell to Oryk. Then he spurred his steed forward and galloped with Roran and Arya and the rest of the elves away from Hadarth and down the game trail that ran along the southern bank of the Edda, where the air was sweet with the aroma of willows and cottonwoods. Above the dragons followed, twining around each other in a playful, spiraling dance. Outside Hadarth, Aragorn reigned in his mount, as did the others, and they rode on at a slower, more comfortable pace talking softly amongst themselves. Aragon discussed nothing of importance with Arya or Roran, nor they with him, for it was not the words that mattered, but rather the sense of closeness they shared in the confines of the night. The mood between them felt precious and fragile, and when they spoke, it was with greater kindness than usual, for they knew their time together was drawing to an end, and none wished to mar it with a thoughtless phrase. 
They soon arrived at the top of a small hill and gazed down from it upon the Talita, which sat waiting for them on the far side. The ship appeared as Aragon knew it would, as it must. By the light of the pale moon, the vessel looked like a swan ready to take flight from the wide, slow-moving river and carry him into the vast unknown. The elves had lowered its sails, and the sheets of fabric gleamed with a faint sheen. A single figure stood at the tiller, but otherwise the deck was empty. Past the Talita, the f how many times is he gonna fucking tell us his fucking ship's name? Like, past the ship, just leave it at past the ship. He really likes the name of the ship, I think. <laughs> past the Talita, the flat, dark plain. It, it's like marquee all over again. <laughs> Past the Talita, the flat, dark plain extended all the way to the distant horizon, a daunting expanse broken only by the river itself, which lay upon the land like a strip of hammered metal. A tightness formed in Aragon's throat, and he pulled the hood of his cloak over his head, as if to hide himself from sight. They slowly rode down the hill and through the whispering grass to the pebble beach by the ship. The hooves of the horses sounded sharp and loud against the stones. There Aragon dismounted as did the others. Unbidden, the elves formed two lines leading to the ship, one facing the other, and they planted the ends of their spears in the ground by their feet and stood thus, statue-like. What? Feels really formal for the second time that they're getting on this ship. It's the last time. It's the final boarding. <laughs> <laughs> Aragon looked them over and the tightness in his throat increased, making it difficult to breathe properly. <laughs> He's like having a panic attack. Oh no, poor kid. Now is the moment, said Sephira, and he knew she was right. Aragon untied the casket of gold and gems from the back of his horse's saddle and carried it to Roran. This is where we part then? Roran asked. Aragon nodded. Here, he said giving the casket to Roran. You should have this. You can make better use of it than I. Use it to build your castle. I'll do that, said Roran, his voice thick. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. Aww. He placed a casket under his left arm, and then he embraced Aragon with his right, and they held each other for a long moment. Afterward, Roran said, Be safe, brother. You too, brother. Take care of Katrina and Ismira. I will. Brother. Brother. Stay safe, brother. <laughs> you too, brother. Unable to think of anything else to say, Aragon touched Roran once more on the shoulder, then turned away and went to join Arya, where she stood waiting for him by the two rows of elves. They stared at each other for a handful of heartbeats, and then Arya said, Aragon. She had drawn her cowl as well, and in the moonlight, he could see little of her face. Arya. He looked down at the silvery river and then back at Arya, and he gripped the hilt of Brisinger. He was so full of emotion, he trembled. He did not want to leave, but he knew he must. God damn it, they're gonna fucking embrace. You ready for some cringe? <sighs> cringe warning! <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me. Her gaze darted up. I cannot. Stay with me until the first curve in the river. That feels like an innuendo. <laughs> she hesitated, then nodded. He held out his arm, and she looped hers through his, and together they walked onto the ship and went to stand by the prow. The elves behind them followed, and once they were all on board, they pulled up the gangplank. Without wind or oars, the ship moved away from the stony shore and began to drift down the long, flat river. On the beach, Roran stood alone, watching them go. He's just standing there like, um... <laughs> how am I going to get home? <laughs> <laughs> can someone, like, show me how to get home? Like, I got a fucking treasure chest full of gold here and a castle to build and a wife and a daughter <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> then he threw back his head and uttered a long, aching cry, and the night echoed with the sound of his loss. Who? Roran. He's like, Mah. <laughs> 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 it's like Freya when we're leaving. She goes, <laughs> dude, that this is weird. Yeah. Okay. I don't think Roran would do that. No. 
I mean, what do we know? We're not, we didn't write the character, right? Yeah, what do I know about any of these characters? Absolutely fucking nothing. For several minutes, Aragon stood next to Arya, and neither spoke as they watched the first curve in the river approach. At last, Aragon turned to her, and he pushed the cowl away from her face so that he could see her eyes. Stop! The end. (laughs) (laughs) Arya, he said, and he whispered her true name. Ew. A tremor of recognition ran through her. She whispered his true name in response, and he too shivered at the hearing (laughs) of the fullness of his being. (laughs) Kevin. Kevin. (laughs) He opened his mouth to speak again, but Arya forestalled him by placing three of her fingers upon his lips. She stepped back from him, then, and raised one arm over her head. Farewell, Aragon Shadeslayer, she said. And then Fiernan swept down from above and snatched her off the deck of the ship. Shut up! Buffeting Aragon with the gusts of air from his wings. Okay. That's not like something I just made up to make, to like sound ridiculous. It's like the actual text. At at first I genuinely thought you were making that up. Until I said buffeting. Yeah. Because it's... Buffeting? Buffeting? I think. Jimmy Buffeting? Buffet? Buffeting? <laughs> Farewell, Aragon whispered as he watched her and Fiernan fly back toward where Arag- Roran, fucking whoever, his, somebody. <laughs> Roran still stood upon the distant shore. What? I just, okay, so when she's like, she stuck her hand up and then she got swept away, I just imagine her still hanging there. <laughs> By, like, her hand just, like, flying through the air. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Then Aragon finally allowed the tears to spill from his eyes, and he clutched the railing of the ship and wept as he left behind all that he had ever known. You didn't have to. Yep, didn't have to. (laughs) Above, Sephira keened, and her grief mingled with his as they mourned what could never be. In time, however, Aragon's heart slowed, and his eyes dried. And he died. He died. His heart slowly fucking died. Jesus. The end. (laughs) (laughs) And his tears dried, and a measure of peace stole over him as he gazed out at the empty plain. He wondered what strange things they might encounter within its wild reaches, and he pondered the life he and Saphira were to have. The life with the dragons and riders. You are not alone, little one, said Saphira. A smile crept across his face, and the ship sailed onward, gliding serenely down the moonlit river toward the dark lands beyond. The end. That's it? No epilogue? (laughs) Just acknowledgments. Okay. Um. Okay. I okay. Um, okay. Here. <laughs> I just okay. Look. I think the like riding off into the sunset is like just a little bit overdone. There was no sunset. It into was the moonlight. moonlight. Into the moon. The moon set. <laughs> the moon set. Um, I really just feel like it should have fucking ended after Nazawada's like coronation or something. I don't know. I just feel like I that was. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't. I do not like the way the book ended because it. I mean, it gives like a sense of finality to like Aragon's story and everything, but I just don't like. That ending. Um, it felt really like, like it didn't have enough punch of an ending. You know what I mean? Or something. I don't know. You know what would have made it a little bit more punchy? If Murtag would have showed up. That would have been like, 
Because it's been like months and months and months at this point. Mm -hmm. Like probably like a whole ass other year. Yeah, he's probably got his shit figured out by now. (laughs) Well, I'm just saying like it would have been incredible that like if he came to a point in his life where he's like, I'm like ready to take on that responsibility as a dragon rider. You know what I mean? And like the fucking brothers who were sworn enemies were literally fighting each other, trying to kill each other. Well, Aragon wasn't trying to kill him, but you know what I mean? Like they're fighting each other. And then the end that they can like reunite and that like their fathers were enemies. And then this sort of like this like generational sort of like mending of a thing. I don't know. I just think that would have been cool. Some sort of just something more than meaningful. Yeah. And then, I mean, like, I guess I also just, like, really don't like the ending because I really do not agree that the best option was for Aragon to leave with all the Eldenari. I That that was, like, the best choice for the writers that were going to be, that are going to be brought up, you know, mm-hmm. that that he couldn't, that he has a name of names and he couldn't just go cleanse Rowengard or whatever. <clears throat> like, all of his arguments... I just like, I like, he has his like argument for it, but then I feel like the counter argument to that is just so much stronger than his initial argument that yeah. I'm like, I don't think the Eldenari would have g- agreed with that at all. They would have been like, mm, we understand your concern, but like, we're like very powerful altogether. <laughs> so like, you don't need to be concerned. Yeah, I think that ending kind of made me go, Mm. hmm. Like, I don't think that, I like Auric showing up with a fucking party to be like, you thought I'd let you go without some fucking... Sending you off the dwarven way. You know what I mean? Like, that seems like really in character for him, and I don't mind that. Yeah. I think that uh, Roran, Banshee Wailing... It was weird. Seemed weird. I feel like he would have thrown his hammer at Aragon. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> or I feel like he would be like a silent crier. Like he'd let like one silent tear out or something, and just and like it just disappeared into his beard. Yeah, and then just like let like let it be done. And then I also think it's weird that uh, Arya just got like UFO craned out of there. <laughs> that just was like weird to me. This all feels very like weird. <laughs> yeah, I really think that if it was gonna like for ending this way, I think like Murtag. Like, seeing Murtag off in the distance, like, like coming to him and, like, sort of, like, leaving it there that, like, oh, they saw a red glimmer off in the distance. It was Murtag. And then, like, that sort of, like, you can... You can put together what's about to happen. Even if yeah. it was a fucking... Even if it was a fucking thing where Murtag was sitting on the bank of the fucking shore with Thorn in the sky and then fearing in and... That would have been so Fearnan cool. Fearnan and Saphira and Thorn were all s- s- spiraling about and dancing in the sky. And then fucking, you know, Aragon was like, stop the boat. And they stopped the boat. And Air- Murtag came on and was like, where are you going, bro? And he's like, fuck this place. And then Murtag's like, seriously, though, fuck this place. I do not like this place anymore. <laughs> I do not want to be here. And then he's let's like, let's move countries. Let's bro, bro it up. We'll fucking go make our own land, own riders, own dragons. Let's do it. And Murtag's like, bet. Dude, okay. So <laughs> it seems like this whole transit was like planned for Aragon. Like he just went and like met up with people. Like the logistics were not like his dealings, probably. So it would have been super cool. That if, like, when the boat went further up the river, that it, like, went to go pick up Murtag. Mm. And then when he arrived to the boat, like, they all said their goodbyes, and he got onto the boat, and there was, like, a cloaked figure, and then he turned around, and it's, like, Murtag, and he's, like... (laughs) Surprise! He's, like... Surprise, motherfucker! You know, like, I've been waiting for you. Like, let's go. You know, I think that would have been, like... And it was, like, a little bit of, like, behind Aragorn's back, but the Eldenari like kind of knew this was all already going to mm-hmm. happen. And so they had already reached out to Murtag and like told him the plan as well. <clears throat> or was Murtag's plan all along? I don't, I don't you know even care. I, mean? I just, just that. 
would have been perf. And I feel like that, I don't know. Missed opportunity. Because <sighs> Murtag doesn't have to leave the lands and never come back if she wants if he wants to write Murtag coming back at some point to do something, you know? Yeah. I don't I just, there are some parts of this story, like as a whole, over all of the books that like, it's, you know, as a reader, it's supposed to be impactful. And like, I'm sure people like, maybe it was impactful for them. But for me, that just felt like really like empty in a way. Like, I just felt like it fell flat, like, for such an important moment. Like, he's sailing off into the moonset. So, like, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, I just kind of felt like, what? I do feel like as commentators on books and read, like, when we're reading books, like, the sole purpose of this is to, like, comment comment on yeah. the reading that in like heavy moments or hard hitting moments or something like we both like shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking back to like some Harry Potter moments where it was like we were just being we were, I was just reading and we were being silent because it was like no maybe isn't the time to shit on something like like when uh, Snape was like always like we had like I'm pr I can't remember but i'm pretty sure we didn't like i think we had like a moment of silence of respect or something <laughs> we had like not minimal commentary yeah but you know that like when the ending of the book is happening it's supposed to be this like emotional fucking thing and we're just like and then he died the end you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can kind of tell it's like it's not, not like hitting hard it's not like drawing me in you know what i mean yeah yikes i mean Look, I like not a bad ending because Baragon and Arya didn't like end up together. It wasn't like she fucking kissed him or anything, you know. She put three she of her even, fingers. Yeah, on I don't his know why it's so specific, but you know, stopped him from fucking. I think it was she more went, of knock like it a. Off. I think it was more of like a. She like just put her like hand on his mouth, and it just so happened to be three fingers just like <clears> stuck <throat> to his lips. She was like crying, so she couldn't see. So she's like. <laughs> And then she's like, Fernan, get me the fuck out of here. Yeah, she just like. You just Apache attack helicoptered in. <laughs> <laughs> I really just imagined it as like every fucking action war movie that's ever existed. And they're like on the rope from a helicopter or yeah. whatever. Like, like, that's exactly what I just imagined. And it was just not just weird. I don't like that. I thought that was lame. I thought she was just going to go pink and then just be gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. That's kind of a weird way to, to write all of that. I mean, I guess it's like the only way that she could have got off the ship besides leaping 50 foot at a fucking. Yeah, isn't she supposed to be some kind of fucking immortal superhuman motherfucker who can jump as far <clears throat> as she wants ever? She could have just jumped off the damn boat. Couldn't they have stopped the boat for her? You don't think they like organized? Like nobody was like, hey, if you're going to get off at the next curve, we, we could just like stop. Because we're magic. We can just stop the boat. You're going to have to jump off. Or jump. Or have your dragon pick you up. Helicopter style. Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad Arya didn't like end up going with him or anything weird like that. That she was like. She like removed her cowl and her like little circlet was gone. Mm -hmm. Her little crown. She's like I'm coming with you. I'm glad that she wasn't like. It wasn't like some weird romantic thing where they like kissed. For yeah. the first and last time before he like went away yeah that she was like no yeah friend fucking friends owned him dude she even was like maybe you're kind of cute like the other day she just said that that was like the other week whatever i have no concept of time she's like if maybe you're kind of cute i don't know maybe when you get older like you're still kind of young it's kind of creepy like give it a hundred years blah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that was weird. I feel weird. I'm weird. That eight chapters of an ending, or six chapters of an ending, whatever that was, I think is too much epilogue for me. Was it a full six chapters of ending? <laughs> yeah, because Heir to the Empire was 71. 72 was a fitting epitaph, so solid 
almost seven chapters of ending the series. I mean, I guess he could have wrapped all of it up in one one chapter, but I think maybe two chapters would have been just perf. I mean, that's it doesn't have to be like one chapter. I just feel like maybe... Especially if he ever feels like coming back to the book or coming mm-hmm. back to the world of Elegasia, he can like uh, tackle some of those unanswered things, like leave people wanting more type of thing. Yeah. I've just never read a book that really the... Took so long to end. That the ending, like the falling action and like the ending of the story like took so long. I think he got, <clears throat> you know, like a little bit of... This was his first book series that he ever yeah. wrote. He grew, grew so attached to all the characters and everything. I mean, he's probably crying while he was writing the ending. I guess that's a good point. That like laughing at it. <laughs> I guess like I didn't really think of it like that though. That it's like he is Aragon and he is leaving his characters to potentially never go back to Allegasia again. Yeah, I mean, it's in the bones. He can never go back. Also, I feel like. Also, 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 I don't know if I already brought this up before, but also he has a true name now. Mm -hmm. So couldn't he just magic away that like little, little destiny foretelling fortune? Out of all the fucking explanation, the divination and the bones wasn't really explained to me. Because is that like, like a set in stone kind of a deal? Or is it like now that his name is different? Yeah. After he got the bones? You know, like what really stops him from not going back? Like really though? Like, if he's, like, going back and there's, like, a fuck... Is there going to be a magical force to keep him back? And then... That's, like, the thing, though, about, like, divination, I feel like, is if you you get the prophecy and then it's, like, it's the prophecy. It has to be, like, fulfilled. And it's, like, does it? And is it, like, he's not going to go back, but it's, like, a metaphor for, like, he's going to leave Allegasia and it's going to be so changed that he can never come back to what was before so it won't be... Yeah. ...the Allegasia that he left... You know? Yeah. Like, what's really stopping him from coming back? It makes no sense. And I also kind of wish that, like... He's immortal, too. So, like, (sighs) you know? Like, he will live forever. So the fact that he will never come back seems pretty implausible. And also, I will die on this hill. He did not have to leave yet. (laughs) Or period. I really don't think he needed to... I don't know why he was so obsessed with leaving. And also, why were they like, let's go to the uncharted part of this continent that we don't know what's there. And we actually don't know if it's even more dangerous than it is in Allegasia for these fucking dragons. Like, let's just go into the unknown. Like, let's just let's just risk it for the biscuit, baby. Let's go into the unknown with all of the Eldenari and all but two eggs and fuck it. Risk it instead of staying here with, you know, just things that we'll have to work out and we'll leave with. All of the Eldunari Dude. and all but two eggs. Kind of sounds about... like you're doing the exact opposite of what Galbatorix did. <laughs> Whereas he destroyed everything and kept it where there was just two, three eggs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, now you're leaving and now everybody's still got to carry around fucking two eggs and try to get riders to hatch. What happens if you just fucking get swamped by some magical creature that you don't even know That's that exists on the East Coast or some shit? You know know what they say? East Coast, Beast Coast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, here's the deal. He really put all of his eggs in one basket, and I really think he should have not done that. And the, just the fact that the Eldunari, Umaroth, and all of them would just agree with him being like, let's put all of our eggs and hearts in one basket and hope that works out. I... The whole leaving Allegasia thing really is just like, I don't get it. I don't get it. <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to me. And I really think his like acknowledgement, and I know like for the readers, it was supposed to be like a reminder of like, remember, there's like a prophecy. But like, I almost would have liked it if he didn't, he left like kind of on his own accord without even thinking about the prophecy. Mm. And that he was just like, this is what like I feel I need to do. And, like, I'm going to leave. And then we, like, fast forward, like, fucking 50, 100 million years or whatever. And he's like, oh, shit. (laughs) There was, like, that prophecy. Uh, There was, like, that prophecy, (laughs) bro. And, like, I have not been back to Allegasia in, like, hundreds of years. You think I'll (laughs) ever go back? You know what I mean? Like, I would have just been, like. I would not have wanted that because that would have been another fucking whole series. That would have been a whole other Aragon series, and we would have been here for another four years. <laughs> you know what? 
It ended great. Ended how it should have. I'm glad that it ended <laughs> the way that it ended, which was just that it ended. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been worse. <laughs> Gone on for another four years. This is me happy with what we got. You get Today, what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Today's lesson. Take, say it again, Demi. You get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Hell yeah, dude. Perf. Um. Any final thoughts on this series as a whole? As a whole, I like his ideas. I like his kind of idea of magic and that there seems to be a more scientific stance on it, that there's like limitations and it's not willy nilly. Like there's a lot of stuff I liked in this book. I think that CP is not a writer for me. That's all. He used to be a writer for me at one point, but I think I grew up or I think his writing's a lot better when you read it in your head because you can like power read through long descriptions yeah. and like let it build in your head a little bit better and then just kind of, you know, like fill your imagination in. But when it's being read out loud to you, it's kind of hard to do that. I, I think sometimes. Which really, really drives home for me why film adaptations of books are sometimes so wildly different. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> well, Demi, there's only one more thing left to do in this episode. What is that? Oh, that's more sad than the fucking ending of this I, like, book. I got weirdly emotional. That was so weird. Yeah, because why am I gonna years? Why am I like feeling like I'm gonna cry? This is so dumb. And it's kind of your wall, so you erase it. Um. So Oric lived. That was wrong. So I'm gr glad I was wrong about that. Oh, we should do a tally. Yeah. Um, Nazawada. Are you going to cry? I don't know. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Nazawada and Aragon. So you had Nothing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 theories. At least on the wall. Everything that's crossed out has been confirmed to be true. Mm -hmm. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. King Orin is shady. That was like... I had a, like a, a feeling that he was shady, but it never really came to fruition until the end of this fucking book. Because I thought maybe yeah. not, but he did turn out to be shady. Murtag will be a good guy again. He's a good guy now. So you got six right out of five. You got more than half of your theories correct. That's pretty good. I really wanted Nazawada to be a writer, but I guess you couldn't have two queens that were also dragon riders. That spot was reserved for Arya. Um, yeah, and there's only three eggs. It didn't have to be Arya, though. You said two queens. I'm just, well, there's a lot of other eggs, weren't there? Wasn't there, like, a shitload of eggs? Wasn't it, like, the mother load of eggs? Yeah, they should just give them to everybody. <laughs> Hand them out like fucking candy. Don't break it. Um, well, I'm just saying, like, he, like, in the book, you couldn't have, like, Queen Nazawada and Queen Arya, and they're both dragon riders. He had to have Arya be the dragon rider because anime elf titties. Number 16, <laughs> anime elf titties. All right, let's erase okay. it. How? I think Watch it's... Watch not have been recording or some bullshit. And Dude. Like, and then, you know, then we'd have to re-record and there wall would be empty. <laughs> Could you imagine? I would just have to... You know what I would do? I would just do a really shitty cutout, like a mask of another video... <laughs> How do I erase this shit? What if it doesn't erase? What if it's stained on there? So that you can talk into it if you have something important to say? Dude, nothing I say is important. That's wrong. What? That's wrong. What do you mean? You say important things. Like when? Yeah, Why is this bigger than me? Help! <laughs> Holy shit. You're a fucking genius. <laughs> um, so here's another kind of can they even see us? Yeah, they can see up to theory wall, so okay. our heads might be cut off a little bit. But Not mine. <laughs> here's another sad thing. Is this is also the end of this theory wall. Because this is the last series that we're reading in this house. Potentially. Yeah. More than likely. So this entire thing gets erased. Forever. Sad day, dude. Shit. Look fucking quarantine. 
quarantine. The quarantine. We can remove these. We don't even use these anymore, right? Yeah. It'll make erasing easier. Okay, I'm not big enough to take those down though, so. Sad day, baby. Bye. Bye. I should play sad music here. Wall. It's done. <sighs> it feels like empty in here. Yeah, that feels like a really like deep like space there now. Holy shit. It feels weird. Yeah. Having had that there for years, it just felt like just like you just get so accustomed to it and then not having it. I wonder yeah. just like how it looks. From, because like obviously the edit won't be the entirety of us erasing, and it's not going to be like a sped up thing. Yeah, maybe a sped up thing. I don't know. You could do like chunks of it, so it's like mm, progressive, yeah. kind of. <clears throat> but going from stuff on it to after, but it looks fucking whack. Do we would have green paint? We could paint a green screen back there. <laughs> 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 That'd be kind of fun. Well, thank you everyone so much for listening and coming along on this journey of Aragon for four years with us. Uh, it has been quite the adventure. I I just feel so weird. Like this has just been for like, we've just been reading Aragon for so long and we've had the theory wall for like four years that feels weird i don't want to get too much into our plans of what we have for the future in this video because there will be a separate video um, probably already released yeah probably by now oh shit that'll that'll be weird because because <laughs> <laughs> the theory wall so the update video will be blank theory wall yeah that'll be weird it's yeah that's weird you guys have already seen the video that we haven't recorded yet. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, so you, you guys already know the updates. It's what's happening, yeah. what's coming up next and all that stuff. So so I guess just thanks for thanks for always being here. Thanks for listening. Be patient. Being patient with us when we got wild shit that happens. And see you in the next yeah, one. See you later. <laughs> Bye. It's been a long time since we've like ended, ended a it. series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, since we've a... concluded anything. Yeah. Fuck. This feel this is like that same feeling you get when you like